The benefits in, in doing this, uh, in doing the whole exercise, is where we were able to find out exactly um, what our irrigation system was doing. And, go, and going forward now, we know we get very even watering. So we've been quite impressed with the process and uh, highly recommend it. An efficient irrigation system operating to industry best practice provides you, as a grower, with an opportunity to obtain real operational and economic benefits. The key function of an efficient irrigation system is to apply the appropriate volume of water evenly to meet all plant needs in the time available. An efficient and effective irrigation system should apply water evenly across the cropping area, apply the correct volume of water often enough to meet plant demands, and apply the required water in the time available. An overhead irrigation system set up to industry best practice incorporating an appropriate design and layout coupled with a complete maintenance program can meet these goals. The performance of an overhead irrigation system can easily be evaluated by a grower conducting a simple catch can assessment. To do this we need to understand the measurement parameters that are used. An efficient overhead irrigation system should apply the water at the appropriate application rate. To take full advantage of the water holding capacity of your growing media, the mean application rate, or MAR, should be less than the absorption rate of your growing media. Application rates of between 10 mm per hour and 25 mm per hour are considered suitable depending on your growing media components. Some growing media absorption rate examples are a growing media consisting of 85% bark and 15% sand would have an absorption rate of approximately 10 mm per hour. A growing media consisting of 85% bark, 15% sand plus a wetting agent would have an absorption rate of approximately 15 mm per hour. A growing media consisting of 75% bark, 15% sand and 10% coir would have an absorption rate of approximately 20 mm per hour. A growing media consisting of 100% coir would have an absorption rate of approximately 25 mm per hour. Secondly, an irrigation system should apply water evenly across the crop. The coefficient of uniformity, or CU, measures how evenly water application is distributed over the irrigated area. The CU takes both wet and dry areas into account and relates these to the average application. The CU is measured as a percentage with 100% being the absolute ideal. A minimum value for fixed overhead systems is a CU of 85%. New system designs are expected to operate with a CU of 90% or better. Thirdly, the system should apply water to the whole area, minimising dry spots over the same time frame. Scheduling coefficient, or SC, is a measure of the extra time required to irrigate an area to ensure the driest section receives the required amount of water. The scheduling coefficient, or SC, is expressed as a number greater than 1, with 1 being the ideal. A good scheduling coefficient, or SC, is 1.2, with an upper limit of 1.5. The SC can also be used to calculate how long the irrigation system needs to operate. For example, if it takes 10 minutes to wet up the average container in an irrigation zone and the SC is 1.5, it will take 1.5 times 10 minutes, or 15 minutes to wet the driest container. Therefore, a container receiving the appropriate amount of water within the 10 minutes now receives an extra 50% while the driest container is brought to capacity. To do a catch can assessment of an overhead sprinkler system, it is first necessary to gather some information about the sprinklers used. 
Sprinklers are designed by their manufacturers to operate within certain pressure ranges and the distribution pattern of a sprinkler can be altered dramatically with a change in operating pressure. A sprinkler specification sheet can provide information on the nozzle, plates, pressure and flow requirements for a specific sprinkler, along with a measure of its wetted footprint or the area a sprinkler will wet or cover. This can help in determining the appropriate spacing for the sprinkler as well as the required pipe sizes and pumping capacity. The layout of an overhead sprinkler irrigation system should be set out to industry best practice. To achieve best practice and obtain scheduling coefficients of less than 1.5, sprinklers should be arranged to ensure every container in an irrigation zone or grid receives water from four sprinklers. Older conventional system designs do not provide this sprinkler layout and deliver much higher scheduling coefficients, causing excess water use, increased watering time, nutrient leaching, uneven cropping, increased labour costs and reduced production. Evaluation and maintenance are essential parts of operating an efficient and effective production nursery irrigation system. Even the best systems need regular measuring, evaluation and maintenance to provide satisfactory long-term performance. Many industry best management practice or BMP programs also require evidence of regular system evaluations to maintain performance. The following video shows how this assessment can be done. A system evaluation involves making visual observations along with measuring and recording pressure and discharge rates of sprinklers. These measurements can then be compared with industry best management practice parameters and with previous test record measurements. First it is necessary to locate a pressure gauge or measuring point in the system to record the pressure at the irrigation zone or grid during the evaluation. Pressure measurements at the pump or the pump house do not always reflect the pressure available at the test area, but can be useful for comparison or future troubleshooting. A pressure gauge or measuring point is best located at the inlet to the irrigation zone or at a sprinkler head located within the irrigation zone being tested. A pressure gauge can be used directly or alternatively a Schroeder valve can be used. Next it is necessary to select the area to be tested. An area with no plants in place where the catch cans can be located but representative of the irrigation zone should be chosen. It is best to test an area as large as possible within the irrigation zone and wherever feasible include at least one outside edge of the zone to be tested. Growers sometimes are aware of underperforming areas within an irrigation zone and may wish to include those in the test. The system should be operated for a short period of time to ensure all components of the irrigation system are performing correctly. Be aware of correct system pressure, sprinkler blockages, filter pressure losses or backwashing, competing irrigation events and other factors that may affect the result. Once the pre-check has been completed, reset the system. After checking the system, the catch cans are set out in grid formation in the selected test area. Catch cans should be evenly spaced with a maximum spacing of one metre between cans. Ensure that all catch cans are the same size, in good condition, set out level, evenly spaced and not restricted from collecting water from the irrigation event. Weights can be placed in the catch cans to prevent them blowing over if prevailing wind is too strong. Map the irrigation zone indicating the test area, all sprinkler locations and the relative sprinkler and catch can locations. Measure and record catch can diameter, sprinkler type, nozzle size, plate, sprinkler height, layout spacing, number of laterals, sprinklers per lateral, total number of sprinklers. Once the area is set up, it is time to run the test. Operate the irrigation zone and record the duration of the irrigation. Record the pressure within the system during the test. 
record details of wind direction and speed. At the conclusion of the irrigation test, measure the volume contained in each CAD can. The field evaluation is now complete and the test area can be returned to normal operation. Remove any pressure gauges and any Schroeder valves that were used during the evaluation and return the irrigation controller to normal operation. Now the collected field data can be entered into the Waterworks calculator to determine the system performance parameters. Data collected from each catch can evaluation can be recorded and used to benchmark the system and in the future used to compare results to ensure continued system performance. Further information can be found in Nursery Industry Water Management, Best Practice Guidelines and the publication Managing Water in Plant Nurseries, both available from the Nursery and Garden Industry Queensland. This short training video has been supported by South East Queensland Irrigation Futures, the Rural Water Use Efficiency Initiative and Nursery and Garden Industry Queensland. Special thanks to Golden Grove Nursery, Underberg Regional Council Nursery and Harvey Bay Nurseries.